SpaceX continues to build a second star base in Florida, Starlink gets more satellites, Falcon gets more missions, and we finish with today's not relatable to space in any way honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. Since our episode on Tuesday dropped, the only thing worth mentioning about Starship in Texas is that several methane tanks have been delivered to the launch site. Oh, and yesterday, the upper quick disconnect arm did the fastest pull away we've seen it do yet, taking about 14 seconds to retract. As far as the East Coast is concerned, Greg Scott got to the chopper to snap some aerials near pad 39A, where SpaceX is constructing a Starship launch pad for future orbital missions. And Roberts Road, where SpaceX's Hangar X is used to store and maintain Falcon boosters, but also where the company has started foundation work for building future Starships. The future of Starbase, I think, um, it's it's well suited to be kind of like our um, advanced R and D location. So it's like where we would try out um, new designs and uh, new versions of the rocket. And and then I think probably Cape Kennedy would be our sort of main operational uh, launch site. We do have plenty of Starlink news to cover today. On SpaceX's update page, they wrote at length about their approach to space sustainability and safety, most likely in response to NASA's written concerns to the FCC about SpaceX's plan to operate a 30,000 Starlink constellation, but also China's unverified accusations that a couple of their spacecraft almost knocked out the communist country's new space station. SpaceX pointed out and elaborated that they design and build highly reliable and maneuverable satellites, operate them at low altitudes to ensure no persistent debris, and deorbit the ones that aren't verified healthy before any orbital altitudes are raised. They transparently share intel with other satellite owners and operators, and use an advanced collision avoidance system they developed to take effective action when encounter risk exceeds safe thresholds. We also learned SpaceX currently has the capacity to build up to 45 satellites per week, and only 1% of them have failed after orbit raising. SpaceX is also the only commercial operator to have developed expertise in flying a satellite in a high drag mode, which deliberately causes Starlink satellites to drastically reduce speed to the point of deorbit, which they have done over 200 times. Here are some pretty charts, think fast. Earlier today, SpaceX did launch another flock of Starlink sats to low Earth orbit out of Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. This was the fourth flight for this Falcon 9 booster, landing once again successfully on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. All 50 Starlink satellites were deployed successfully less than an hour later. And finally, Northrop Grumman announced Space Logistics is moving forward with a 2024 launch of its mission robotic vehicle and mission extension pods on a SpaceX Falcon rocket. How the mission works is pretty interesting, so here's how it goes. After jettisoning both the MRV and MEPs, which from now on I'll call MEPs, of which there are three, each deploys its solar arrays and uses solar electric propulsion to raise themselves to geosynchronous orbit. Then, one of the MEPs will station itself in a loitering position near a client's soon-to-be stranded satellite, where the MRV will rendezvous and capture the MEP they rode to space with. Then together, make a short trip to the nearby client spacecraft where the MRV will install the MEP onto it. Quick retreat and confirmation all was installed successfully, then the MRV departs to complete another MEP installation in the future for another client. Stranded client satellite now has up to six more years to live thanks to the new addition of state-of-the-art low-power electric propulsion that will keep its orbit raised. And now it's time for today's super serial honorable mention. Okay, since this is the only channel that doesn't engage in any politics, because, ew, gross, what does politics have to do with space? Triggered. I assume that all of you who stuck around over the past couple of years don't know anything about what's going on outside of the space community's little safe space bubble that all of us like to hide in to protect our feelings from reality. And so because this audience obviously knows nothing about what's going on in the real world, I'm going to teach you ignorant hicks about our current geopolitical situation that I'm sure none of you have heard before, and how it definitely has nothing to do with space, which is the only thing we concern ourselves with because it's the only reason we have for living. Despite Biden telling the American people that Putin would be too scared to challenge him if he were president, that's exactly what the Russian leader did this week by invading Ukraine. Now, I couldn't exactly tell you why someone like Putin wouldn't be afraid of someone like Biden. I mean, after all, I'm just a progressive American with a victim complex living a comfy lifestyle. I just simply voted for the guy not knowing anything about him because he's not mean to my delicate feelings on Twitter. I don't know anything about Biden's policies or how he totally embarrassed the U.S. and made us look weak by retreating from Afghanistan in a manner that got more than a dozen troops killed, as well as hundreds of Afghan civilians while leaving thousands of U.S. citizens and working dogs behind with a multi-billion dollar U.S. military base that is currently in the hands of China, who many believe will, without a doubt, soon take over Taiwan, now given our apparent weakness. 
I don't know anything about Biden's decreasing cognitive abilities or corrupt family ties to Ukraine and Burisma, which is what some have speculated to be the reason for Biden's insistency to protect Ukraine's borders while he undermines our own. But none of that matters. What matters is that I'm almost certain Biden is pro-space because he tends to look spaced out most of the time. And that is the only issue I'm interested in as a simple, space-loving, cis-binary eunuch who identifies as a Martian fruitcake during the transatlantic solstice. They, them. So for us to discover why Putin invaded Ukraine and how that has no effect on space, let's start at the beginning of what we do know. In the mid-90s, Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapons thanks to false promises of protection made in the Budapest Memorandum signed by then-President Bill Clinton, Jeffrey Epstein's former travel companion and fan of female interns. Uh, so the Eastern European country hasn't been able to genuinely protect itself from that big bully next door that does happen to own many nukes. What kept Ukraine specifically protected all these years was strong political allies worth fearing. Enter Joe Biden. Now, ignorant right-wingers say Biden's first act in office to shut down the Keystone Pipeline, decimating tens of thousands of American jobs, was foolish. But they're the fools because what they don't seem to realize is that removing America's energy independence shorted the United States 800,000 barrels of oil per day just from canceling the pipeline alone. Which means gas prices went up after Biden took office and the poorest among us could no longer afford to pollute our planet as often. That's the win. Poor people don't have to commute to work anyway. Because they don't work. That's why they're poor. Logic. In Biden's subsequent attempt to then appease the Russians by greenlighting their own Nord Stream 2 pipeline was considered treasonous by the American people. But the American people have no common sense. They are traitors to question Joe. Because what they can't seem to grasp is that Biden felt compelled to do this when he realized, oh shit, we need more barrels of oil now that we're no longer energy independent. So as a bribe, Biden allowed Russia to have their pipeline so Putin would stay out of Ukraine, but also so the United States could pay Russia for some of their oil, about 600,000 barrels a day. Two for ones, genius. Biden also begged OPEC to sell us more barrels to make up the shortage he created, but uh, he walked away empty handed, but, but only because that's what any natural born businessman would do. It's called playing hard to get. Biden learned to negotiate while living comfortably as a lifetime mooch suckling at the teat of the American taxpayer and occasionally taking multi-million dollar bribes from the Chinese. I mean, he's experiencing this sort of thing, guys, obviously. Just look how rich he got from being in government. And now, because of Russia's war with Ukraine, gas prices are about to climb even higher, along with even further inflation that comes naturally with any war. By the way, you definitely don't want to fill up your gas tank sooner rather than later. And you definitely do not want to check out my Patriot Supply at preparewithspace.com. There's a link below in the description. Oh yeah, and let's not forget the small fringe minority of American truckers now making a move on DC thanks to Biden's draconian COVID orders. So there's that. The point I'm trying to make here is that Biden is a leader to be feared. Everything the man is doing to us and the entire world is terrifying. So since we have now clearly established Putin must fear Biden, as the world does. Why did Russia invade Ukraine? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Trump, of course. Now, I'm aware Trump has been out of office for more than a year now, and that Putin didn't invade Ukraine during Trump's presidency, and that Trump didn't even start any new wars despite glassing a military officer of the world's foremost state sponsor of Islamic terrorism, Iran. But it's not like Trump brought peace to the Middle East. Oh, he, he did? I'm not going to tell them that. The reason Trump and Putin got along is because Trump's a Russian agent. Remember Russiagate? The Democrats had all the evidence right there in the Steele dossier. What? The Clinton campaign paid for the dossier by hiring Fusion GPS to work with Russian nationals and foreign spies to conjure up these fake allegations, only to then use the Obama administration and American intelligence agencies to go after Trump and spy on him in the White House, and the media was in on this coup the whole time? Now the Democrats are the ones being arrested? Oh, uh, back to the only topic that matters, space. Because Putin done did Ukraine dirty without the world's permission, because of Trump, the Russian space program is in jeopardy, so says the squinty-eyed geriatric. Between our actions and those of our allies and partners, we estimate that we'll cut off more than half of Russia's high-tech imports. It will strike a blow to their ability to continue to modernize their military. It'll degrade their aerospace industry, including their space program. 
Dimitri of Roscosmos twatted, quote, We greatly value our professional relationship with NASA, but as a Russian and a citizen of Russia, I am completely unhappy with the sometimes openly hostile U.S. policy towards my country. Aw, poor Dimitri. Apparently, he's not aware that our government's hostile policies has resulted in the majority of our own citizens being labeled as terrorists. He also went on to totally lambast Biden, calling his sanctions Alzheimer's sanctions. <clears throat> so to wrap up, there are two lessons we can take away from all this. First, make no mistake, and I cannot stress this enough, World War III cannot be blamed on Biden, his administration, or those who unapologetically and ignorantly voted for him. Sure, I'll vote for him again, given the opportunity in 2024, because I'm informed on the issues that matter most to me, space and climate change. I mean, who cares how many deaths wars cause when climate change has caused no deaths? And second, we all need to pretend that there's no place for politics in space because one certainly doesn't influence the other. Need I remind you that we are a world without borders. Except Ukraine. Stay out, Russia. Stay out! Now, let's all bury our heads deeper into the sand until these geopolitical inconveniences magically disappear. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this episode both informative and enlightening, but if you didn't, leave the feelings that I'm sure are just gushing out of you in the comments below. I don't read most of them anyway. This is educational entertainment that you willingly clicked on for free, so you're welcome. But I would like to extend a very special thank you to those of you who are supporting the show with your hard-earned dollars. It's very much appreciated. If the rest of you would like to join the eccentric fam on Locals, there's a link provided in the description below. Have a phenomenal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. I'm